Phantom Liberty is without a doubt Cyberpunk 2077 at its very best. It's like the whole game had been put in a saucepan and reduced down until the flavour intensified. Even though there was a lot less, what you got for your time and effort was so much more rewarding. I'm going to do a review probably on the three year anniversary, but I just want to talk about the endings for a bit today because they all have so many pros and cons to them. However, there is one ending which I believe is the definitive correct choice. The characters in the game would agree with me. And I'm talking about the endings of Phantom Liberty here, not the ending of the main game. And spoiler, the morally correct ending is not the one that gets you the cure. And although I really quite enjoy seeing two years later and being able to re-enter the world as a face in the crowd, I can't ignore the fact that there is only one path that is the path of true good that does the right thing. So I'm going to pick apart, generally speaking, the ones that don't work. Firstly, there's a major choice at Firestarter where you either help Songbird or you betray her. You either go with Songbird or Reed. They both have great follow-on quests, the Killing Moon and then Black Steel in the Heart of Chaos and Somewhat Damaged. And they're really good fun to play. They've got lots of interesting and meaty content to them, both in their own way, and they both are quite eye-opening. And I think it's important to play all of them and replay them because they inform on each other. You could only play through Phantom Liberty once and get one single ending, but in doing so, you will never know the full picture, unless you watch kind of videos like, you know, this. And I know not everyone has the time, so I have actually put together a video on all the different endings and how to get them, and I talk about them a little bit. But I'm, today I'm just specifically talking about which ending I think is best and why I think it's best. Let's go through the wrong choice first. Firstly, siding with Somi is not the correct approach. If you've got your head screwed on, you'll see that Somi is playing you a little bit and she's not being fully truthful. We know a bit about her history. Walking through the expo, you can hear how negatively she talks about Myers. We know that she's sided with Hansen, so we know that she's duplicitous and hasn't told us the full story. Why should we suddenly switch on full-on trust Somi mode at that point? That would be just daft. Other than maybe that dress? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> And also, if you think back to the fight with the Chimera where she loses control, that's the first hint which you'll see of in the other side when you side with Reed, that wasn't her so much losing control as the other part of her trying to end Myers. That's why it had that red electricity on it. So we should get the idea that she's extremely dangerous, extremely powerful and extremely conflicted and not someone to just be jumped on board with. If you're not feeling used at that point, then, you know, I don't know, that's not to say say Noosa are not using us as well of course because we have the connection to her. Everyone's using us at that point. <laughs> But you also kind of see in her demeanor and you see soon after how her demeanor changes. But how many would die? They'll die so we can survive. If you decide to betray her and stick with Reed, which was the plan, you can very quickly see her demeanor change and see that she's probably not actually herself and already under the heavy and powerful influence of the AIs that she's manipulating from behind the black wall who were really kind of manipulating her. No, I can handle the one down here. Really expected this to work? So me! Wait! Uh, you... You don't know what you're doing! Oh, but I do know me. But let's just say you make that choice and you go on to Killing Moon and you get her through the airport using one of the various methods. One thing that this ending does reveal to us, we feel we're doing this for Somi. We're doing the best thing for her. We're supporting her. But very quickly, you learn that the blue-eyed man is all over this ending. Not only has he boarded the tickets, he's also overseeing our journey through the terminal. He wants her on the moon. And we know that Mr. Blue Eyes is a self-serving person, or in my opinion, AI-controlled human host. 
We can only imagine what his intentions are for Somi once he gets her to the lunar facility. So, if you have any experience of the Blue-Eyed Man and how he's the G-Man watching over us, his motivations are not altruistic and I would uh, bet the farm on that one. But let's say you do go that way and you ignore the fact. So you're presented at the end with, well, three choices really. Two choices, one of them is a slight variant. One is to kill Solomon Reed and send Somi off to space. And in doing so, pat yourself on the back, you've stopped the quote-unquote man and you have saved Somi and you've sent her off altruistically as well because in that point she has told you that she has been manipulating you and there is no cure for you it can only be used once so you probably feel like you're doing the right thing here you're you know sacrificing yourself and being the better person but you are handing over someone that has black hole AI to Mr. Blue Eyes that can't be good Oh yeah, you'll say you get contacted from her afterwards. Yeah, you do. You get a contact from an unknown number and you get some indications that it's her reaching out to you. But you also get a contact from the unknown caller on the other side when you don't side with Somi. And we know then that that isn't Somi. We know that unknown contact is the Blackwall AI enabling us to use their tech uh, because obviously they failed through Somi. So they're going to use us and we create Erebus or Kanto. <laughs> so they're going to use us to break out from behind the black wall if we choose to use Erebus or Kanto. So that being said, you know, how do we know that the unknown contact from the Somi ending is actually Somi? And bear in mind, it would have access to all her knowledge and her experiences from having been in her head. So you can also go and find the shard that she left thanking you before you met her. It's in the same alleyway where you got in the van and drove to the Morrow Rock spaceport. But, but that was made when she was in self-preservation mode and influence of the black hole AI. So there's no guarantee that the contacts you have afterwards are from So Me or are from So Me in a better place. That's it. That's all we hear from her. Alex contacts you. She's not going to kill you. That's not because she feels you've done the right thing, but that's because she knows you're fucked anyway. So for me, you have just served a purpose unknowingly. And it's very clever in the way it does that, because when you find out for certain, even if you've suspected it, that Somi is using you and there is no cure for you, you could feel that handing her over to Reed at that point is you actually being petty and vengeful because she has betrayed you. And the game makes you feel that way, so it reinforces that you're doing the right thing by letting her use the Nexus and, you know, you just go and settle for your standard endings. You kind of feel like you're, you're doing the right thing. It's very clever, but nah, this is the first wrong ending. The next wrong ending is still on the track where you've gone down the killing moon and this is handing her over to Reed. At this point she is alive, you're handing her over to Noosa to do with as they please. We know they're not good. We've seen and heard the conversations on the rooftop between Reed and Myers. We know they don't have Somi's best interests at heart and you really see this when you do somewhat damaged. You really see it. You see exactly what they did to her, how they used her, how they transformed her. She's really nothing more than an asset or a weapon of mass destruction. And with the Black Hole AI, if they can control it and maintain it, again, you're giving a very powerful weapon, a very dangerous weapon that could bring the downfall of mankind to people who are, well, let's just say less than trustworthy and uh, feel like they know best about everything. Whether or not you decide to trade her for the cure like a Judas and take your 30 pieces of silver and get to see that ending, which I highly recommend you do at some point, it still doesn't make it a better ending, you know, even if you say you don't want help. So this is not the right ending. You are handing over something extremely powerful. And beyond that, unlike when you're letting her go to Tycho base with Mr. Blue Eyes, where you don't know for sure what's going to happen, here you're knowingly committing her to a life of some kind of servitude. In spite of what Reed might say, you know, you really have to buy into his whole outlook in order to disagree with that. But regardless, you're not going to be fully aware of that unless you've played the other side of the coin as well. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. It's only then that you realize, oh well, that was just not the right thing to do because she is going to be, you know, used and abused and yeah. So nothing, in my opinion, good comes from going the killing moon route. But again, that only comes with the hindsight of having played somewhat damaged. So let's cycle back then to 
betraying her or staying on mission and capturing her and going with Solomon Reed. You get to learn a hell of a lot. You go from being an unwitting accomplice to someone that knows the full story and can make an informed choice. Unlike where you're kind of making a reflex judgment, doing the King of Wands or the King of Swords ending, going from uh, Killing Moon, here you actually learn so much. When you're going through the facility, you see how she was convinced and taken and manipulated by Noosa and given the augments and transformed into what we see now and used to be this super net running AI type person weapon, like a kick ass net runner, if nothing else, at the most basic. But you basically see all she went through and you learn so much about Noosa and the FIA and you realize this isn't a good home. These people, although I'm not referring to Solomon Reed, but these people don't have her best interests at heart. Unfortunately, Solomon Reed is blinded the whole time by duty and loyalty whilst he's conflicted and has Somi's best interests at heart when he probably knows his superiors like Myers don't have her best interests at heart. All they need to do is tell him that they do and that's enough for him to compartmentalize and do the mental gymnastics required to convince himself that what he's doing is in her best interest. And that's the whole kind of thing with Solomon Reed. He's stuck between his loyalty for the government and his paternal instincts for Somi. It takes you as V to make the hard choices for him. The choices he would never be able to make for Somi or any member of his team for that matter. Look at the way he remained in hiding for seven years to protect Alex and doesn't want to get revenge on Somi either. So anyway, when you're going through this quest, and it's a really good quest, really worthwhile seeing. If you've done Killing Moon and you haven't done this, wow, why are you watching this? But <laughs> I'm sure you have. And if you've played Alien Isolation, I'm sure you got those same vibes and we're looking for lockers to hide in. Yeah, if you haven't played Alien Isolation, oh my goodness, what a game. Go play that when you're done with Cyberpunk. I highly recommend it. But going through that quest, we come to a key moment where Somi fighting against the AI manages to subdue it for a moment. You catch up with her and you're given a heart-wrenching choice whether or not to respond to her pleas to end her life or refuse her and hand her over to Reed. Now, this is another one of those times when you're gonna have to take pause. If you choose not to acquiesce to her request and hand her over to Reed, you're pretty much on the same point as uh, King of Swords. You're handing her over to Noosa, and this time it's so much worse. You're clearly doing it because you want your own cure. A face in the crowd. And you don't care about what you're subjecting her to. You've seen what she's been through at this point, and if you turn a blind eye, the only mental gymnastics you can make is that she doesn't know her own mind. But she does. Throughout that mission, she is fighting. You're talking to her and you're talking to Songbird. She kind of fractures throughout this mission, where you have Songbird, who is the Blackwall AI at this point, in my opinion just for ease of description. And you have Somi, who is the human being. Somi is fighting with Songbird. Songbird will kill you using the robots where Somi is doing everything she can to protect you and talk you through how to get to her. And I think this is key. If we just cycle back to Killing Moon. During Killing Moon, there's no conflict. You're doing everything that the AI wants. Somi is fine for the most part. If you dilly-dally, you'll notice that she gets a little bit cross in her voice. She gets a little bit frustrated, but never to the point of becoming this Jekyll and Hyde AI situation where she really shows her true colors. She's teetering on the brink, she's weak at times, but at the same time, she never really shows her full colors until the point where you're having that big fight where the helicopter's there and you actually see her true power of the Blackwall AI she has at her fingertips literally speaking, but throughout somewhat damaged. And during Firestarter, when you initially try to stop her, you see the AI part of her. You see that really powerful, really scary part of her bubble to the surface and you see it all the way through somewhat damaged. Yeah, it is her, but it's the AI in her that makes her like that. The betrayed, hateful, vengeful part of her that the AI is harnessing more so than her true nature. In the same way that Mr. Blue Eyes is can, but I guess if you ever went against him, you would see his true colors too. Not that you ever get the chance throughout the game. Important figure in the sequel, I guarantee it. It's the AI that needs to and wants to get to the sino facility. And this is probably the one positive aspect of the Killing Moon is that you don't let the AI get that close to uh, what it really needs and wants. But at the same time, the unknown quantity of the Killing Moon could be so much worse. And also a plan B for the AI anyway, if it couldn't get to sino -Zer. 
and I can actually see the flip side of the coin as well saying that if the pursuit to get to Tycho was purely so me then from a perspective of the human race's interests she didn't know what she was doing thinking that she was just going to save herself what she was actually doing was presenting with or reconnecting Mr. Blue Eyes with these AIs was infinitely worse and that by choosing to stick with Reed and forcing her down the route of going into the Sinosure facility that it's you that has caused her to want to take her own life because you've pushed her into this situation where the AI has really come to the fore and she is struggling to control it and she sees her only way out as being that. There are definitely ways to argue the point for different outcomes. I understand that. This is just my opinion on the way things go and basically the best outcome for humanity to start with. And then once humanity is looked after, in the words of Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And in this case, that's what leads us to this point. It's a very shitty choice, but there is only one choice at this point. And that's what kind of makes things correct, I think. So going back to the choice, because she has become so fractured, you get to talk to Somi. She's doing everything she can to protect you while Songbird is trying to kill you. And she manages with all her might to stop the robot and let you get to her so that you can help her. And she is begging you to end her life. And it's heartbreaking, something you feel like you don't have the right to do. It's not your decision to make. However, you're the only person that's actually seen what she's capable of. You're the only person that's seen how much struggle she's been through and how much pain she's currently in. And it's what she's begging you to do. And you know it's the clarity of mind. But still, you might not want to piss off Reed. You might not want to miss out on the ending. And you might go, look, I'm doing the right thing here. If you leave her to Reed, Reed's going to be grateful. But you can see the whole time, from that point on, he's extremely contemplative. He doesn't even want to carry her from the car. Now, that could be partially to do with the mechanics of the game. I'm not sure if I've seen any other characters carrying any other characters throughout the game, so it might not be possible. But either way, it plays into the whole emotion. And the whole thing, even though you've kept her alive, is a very somber affair. And you get a hollow pat on the back from Myers and everything's hunky-dory you get your quote-unquote happy ending where you get to be a face in the crowd and you kind of feel things are all right and that would be the king of pentacles ending now the only ending however that actually made me feel like I had made the right choice the king of cups is the one where leave in silence you make the decision to pull the plug and let Somi go the moment you do that you get the derision from Reed you know he says that he should have been the one there to make the decision he says that it wasn't your decision to make and and that he could have protected so me because he believes that he could have and you kind of feel like it wasn't your decision to make and you feel pretty bad about it and it's never a good thing to do that but there comes a point later on where Solomon Reed contacts you also if you go with the king of pentacles you don't ever hear from so me again you hear from Reed but uh, yeah, as far as Somi's ending is concerned, who knows? But we can draw some conclusions based on what we've seen of what Noosa have done. Especially if you're an ex-corpo, you, you rage against the machine and you know you know what corpos and governments are like. There's no real question that Somi's future is not bright, it's not orange. Here's the real key. Now I'm not going to talk over this, I just want to play this, just in case you've not done this. I want you to hear what Solomon Reed says here during the King of Cups. So here we go. You failed as an FIA associated operative. You failed me, Alex, Myers, hell, maybe even yourself. Whoa, no holes barred, huh? Reed, I... In spite of that, here we are, watching a ball game, talking. Do you know why? Say it ain't so, Saul. You here to apologize? Tell me you'll help after all? I see you still have your sense of humor. I can't help you, and I got nothing to apologize for. Close, though. All right, let me hear it. (laughs) You were right. I wanted to tell you in person. You were right, V. Shit, I wasn't expecting that. I'm not surprised. V, I almost lost everything because of you. Fuck, Reed. Don't talk. Just listen. I lost partners, friends, the trust of my superiors. Everything I believed in, built my life on, gone in seconds. All because I believed you'd help me save Somi.
Reed, I saved So Me. You know that. You were angry for some other reason. Maybe still are. Things slipped from your grip. You didn't get to make the final call. But know what? From where I'm sitting, that was for the best. That's why I said I think you were right. I got nothing to lose now. I might be able to gain something for once, though. He knows that by you failing to be a good spy or whatever, you've actually done the right thing from humanity's perspective. You've kind of broken his conditioning a little bit. You made the hard choice that because of his loyalty, he could never make. And for that, he's going to be truly grateful to you because he knows you've made the right decision. And if he knows you made the right decision, then you got to know you made the right decision at the consequence of not having the cure. Sometimes you've just got to fail at your job to do the right thing. What's the plan then? I don't know what I'll do. And I'm all right with that. Forgot how that felt, but I really fucking missed it. So thanks. Don't sweat it. Buy me a brosef sometime. So there you go, that's it. The King of Cups. The ending where you do not betray Reed, but then when asked at the key moment, you let Somi go. That's the right ending. Solomon Reed agrees with me. Do you? And yes, I, I know it's a somber ending, but uh, yeah, it is a... Uh... You know, sometimes a sad ending is the correct ending because the only way to get happy endings is by compartmentalizing yourself and not thinking about the negative consequences of what you've chosen. All right, folks, let me know down below and every view helps me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this if you enjoyed this video. In the meantime, if you'd like to check out this video, YouTube thinks you'd like this one. I let the algorithm pick because it's smarter than I am. <laughs>